Well, welcome to Godly Play. We're going to continue to hear about the story of the great family and how uh, Abraham and Sarah, God promised them that they would have more descendants than the stars in the sky and more descendants than the grains of sand in the desert. And so we're going to hear about where that story picks up after Abraham and Sarah have their one son, Isaac. Well, God promised Abraham and Sarah that they would be the mother and father of a great family. But Abraham and Sarah only had one son, Isaac. And then Isaac married Rebekah. And for a long time, they didn't have any children until God, with God's help, They had two boys, Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob were twins, but they were not like each other. Esau was big and Jacob was small. Esau had red hair and Jacob had dark hair. Esau was hairy and Jacob had smooth skin. Esau liked to hunt and Jacob stayed by the tent to watch the sheep. Esau was born first. And Jacob grabbed his ankle while they were being born. So J Esau was supposed to be the one to have his father's things when his father died. Now Isaac loved, jo loved Esau best, but Rebekah loved Joseph, loved Jacob best. Jacob thought it was not fair that Esau was treated special because he was the oldest. They had been born the same day. They were twins after all. Well, one day Esau came home from hunting. He was very hungry. So Jacob made him some soup. Esau asked his brother for some, and Jacob said, I will give it to you if you will agree that I can have father's things when he dies. Well, Esau was very hungry, not like I just need a snack, but like very hungry to where he thought he might die. And so he figured, what are father's things when I'm so hungry? And so he took the soup. He agreed to the agreement with his brother. And because there was agree an agreement now between the brothers, Jacob would be like the oldest son. Well, Isaac was old and he couldn't see. So he asked Esau to go hunting and make the stew he liked best. And then Isaac said he would bless him. Well, Rebecca overheard this. And now remember, she likes Jacob best. So she thought Jacob should get the blessing. So she and Jacob made Isaac's special stew from a lamb instead of a wild animal. This is the bowl of soup. Stew. They put animal skins on Jacob's arms so that they could trick Isaac into giving him the blessing so that his he would seem hairy like Esau. Jacob went to his father with the stew and Isaac believed that Jacob was Esau and he laid his hands on him and he blessed him. So then when Esau returned, with stew for his father, he discovered that Isaac had been tricked into giving away the blessing that should have been his. He was so angry that he threatened to kill Jacob. So Rebecca asked Isaac to send Jacob away to her family to go find a wife. And Isaac agreed. Jacob set off quickly. 
through the desert toward Haran, where his mother's family lived. One night he found a rock and he made it his pillow. While he slept, he dreamt of a great ladder. Stretching all the way into heaven, there were angels climbing up and down, and God seemed to be above and around and beside this place. And a voice said, I am the God of Abraham and Isaac. I will give you this land on which you lie for you and your descendants. Through them, all the world will be blessed. I am with you, and I will bring you back to this land. When Jacob awoke, he knew he had heard God in his dream. He poured oil on the stone so that he would always remember what God had said and name the place Bethel the house of God. Jacob traveled on and came to a well where the shepherds watered their flocks. There was a beautiful young woman there with her father's sheep. Her name was Rachel, the daughter of his mother's brother. Jacob wanted to make her his wife. So he offered to work for her father, Laban, for seven years in exchange for his permission to marry Rachel. After seven years, the wedding took place. But when Jacob saw his wife's face, he discovered that he had been tricked and that he was married to Leah, Rachel's sister. Laban told Jacob that he could marry Rachel too if he worked another seven years. Finally, Jacob and Rachel were married. Well, then Jacob worked seven more years for his uncle Laban. Here is Jacob with his two wives, who are sisters, Leah and Rachel. And he worked another seven years for his uncle Laban. And in that time, God blessed Jacob and his work, and Laban's flocks grew. Jacob worked for his uncle for 21 years. Well, then God came close to him, and he told him it was time to return home. So Jacob packed up all that he had and began the journey home with his family. We don't need wedding dresses anymore. Jacob was afraid to meet his brother again. Esau had threatened to kill Jacob and was coming to meet him with 400 men. Jacob prayed to God and sent presents to Esau. That night, he went apart from his family to pray and a strange thing happened. Someone struggled with him all night. The stranger touched Jacob's thigh and his hip came out of joint. But Jacob held on until morning. The stranger said, let me go. But Jacob knew this was no ordinary person. He refused to let go until the stranger had given him a blessing. The stranger said, your name will no longer be Jacob. You will be called Israel, for you have struggled with God and with people and have prevailed. And he blessed him. So Jacob called the place. Peniel, which means 
the face of God because he knew he had been struggling with God. Well, Jacob caught up with his family. Now he's limping because of his injury. And he went in front of them to meet up with Esau, his twin brother. He bowed down to the ground as Esau came near. Then his brother ran to him and put his arms around him. Yay! Finally, old Isaac died, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Now, Jacob, or Israel as he was now called, had 12 sons. I'm going to stay down better. That's a lot of sons. My goodness. 9, 10, 11, 12. They must have had to count heads at night to make sure they had everyone with them. Jacob had 12 sons. Each of these sons became the head of a tribe. Now there were 12 tribes in the great family, and it was called Israel. Now next week, we're going to hear about one of his sons named Joseph. Now I wonder, what part of the story did you like best? I have to say, it's a little strange that he married sisters and he got tricked by his father-in-law. But I don't think that's the part I like best. I also think it's pretty interesting that he wrestled with God over here. But I don't know if I think that's the part I like best either. Hmm. I do like the part when he and his brother became friends again after being in such a big fight. But I don't know if that's the part I like best either. I wonder what part of the story you liked best. I wonder what part of the story is most important. A lot of people talk about Jacob's ladder. I wonder if that's the part that's most important. I wonder what you think is most important. I wonder what part is about you. What part you're in. Maybe you have a brother or a sister that you fight with sometimes. Or maybe you've been really hungry, so hungry that you would do anything for some stew. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder what part is about you or what part you're in. I wonder if we can leave out any of the story and still have all that we need. Maybe. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Godly Play, the story of Jacob. And I think Maddie Monkey did a great job listening. I think Goat got a little bored. Poor, poor Goat. And Piglet, well, Piglet's always happy. Hey, everybody. There's so much to wonder about that story. So, I thought to end our day today, we could sing a song that talks about shedding some light. Because while we wonder, we can also share the light of God no matter where we go. So get your lights out, because we're going to sing a little bit of this little light of mine.
be learning with you, and we can't wait to see you next week.